This is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. The Independent Office for Police Conduct, the IOPC, has finally concluded its investigation into the shooting of Sharif Cousins in the Frankly area while he was unarmed in an alleyway during a police operation that involved the gang called 6-1. In order to tell Sharif's story fairly, firstly we have to tell you the backstory to as to how and why he ended up getting shot. The first raid took place in Northfield. They raided a property at quarter past four in the morning and bags were thrown from the upstairs window into the garden below. One bag contained a sawn off shotgun with a cartridge in the chamber and five more in a pink sock. A sock which forensic tests later revealed had Scarlett's DNA on it. Jamal Scarlett, also known as Jamie's. Two more weapons were found at that Northfield property, a converted air pistol and an anti-2-2 shot handgun. Reese Brivett, 24, and a 16-year-old kid was arrested uh, in the 4am raid in Northfield. Brivett was sentenced to seven and a half years for possession of firearms. The 16-year-old, who cannot be named for legal reasons, was sentenced to three years' detention, possession of a firearm and possession of ammunition. And then following information the police say from the local area, on July the 26th, 2017, they raided another property afterwards in, in the Green Northfield. Farrell was stopped by officers a short distance away and arrested for dealing cannabis and cocaine. Scarlett slipped away but was in a car which drove past the front of the property not long afterwards. He was spotted by an officer who linked the vehicle to an address in Frankly. They must have been under surveillance because undercover police saw Scarlett leave the address in Frankly with youth worker Sharif Cousins and this is where Sharif comes into it. They do mention he was previously jailed eight, eight years ago for possessing a firearm which he pulled on a police officer. He was formerly associated to Burger Bar crew but has spent his time since leaving the gang trying to help kids come off the road and do more productive stuff music wise and stuff like that. He became a youth worker and set out to help young men steer away from gang culture. Music is a main key because, you know, everybody listens to music and we, we find out that's a way to tap into the younger generation and stuff like but that. But he says armed officers have been sent out to him four times in the past two years and thinks he's the victim of police harassment. The reasons he could have been with Scarlett are many. He could have been helping him go anywhere, just talking to him, just bumped into him. Any reason that he could have been with uh, Scarlett that, that day. Police say that Scarlett disposed of a pizza box in the alleyway in Frankly with a shotgun cartridge in where his DNA was found on it later on. And it's during this police operation that Mr. Sharif Cousins was shot unarmed in an alleyway by the police. Jay Miz was sentenced to 16 years in prison for possession of firearms that he was never found in possession of. They convicted him solely based on DNA evidence found at the other scenes and the shotgun cartridge where his DNA was found on it. This of course makes the job easier for the police, but of course it can make the job easier to set people up in the future. We have to be careful when we change the goalposts for convictions and evidence. Courtney Farrell was jailed for nine years for possession of the same. Jamal from Westminster Road, Hansworth was jailed for six years for conspiracy to supply guns. And that was the series of events that caused all three of them to go down them series of raids where DNA evidence linked them to it and Sharif was actually just caught in the middle of this. The police actually played 6-1 gangs music videos in court as evidence against them proving that there was into selling drugs and threatening their rivals which, which included gangs from the fold Kings Norton and also 365 from the Wheelie Castle area. Hey man you bitch, men got our free pay. These men love to chat. These men coming like bitches. One phone call from a friend and I leave a big man up in stitches. Can't fuck with the six one gang. Man, I take your door off the hinges. Creep up inside with that four fours, put that metal to your brain. Creep up inside with that four fours, put that metal to your brain. This caused them to attentions of the organised crime unit and they focused heavily on them, trying to break this gang up. And as I said before, the new measure of using music videos against them in court, hence why so many drill rappers cover their faces and try to withhold.
they've hold their identity as opposed to having it used against them later on. When these shootings get referred to the Independence Police Complaints Commission, these are the people that investigate it and I think there's a jury and there's an actual process. It takes quite a long time, so it's took two years for this to actually come out. And what they say is the investigation following a non-fatal police shooting in Frankly, South Birmingham found that the West Midlands police officers involved followed p policy and procedure throughout the incident. Sharif Cousins, who was unarmed, was taken to hospital after being shot in the chest in an alleyway on Epping Close on the 26th of July 2017. Armed police had been deployed to the Frankly area in response to intelligence about firearms. The police investigation found that a man who was with, with Cousins at the time when he was shot was convicted of firearm related offences at Birmingham Crown Court in February last year. After being notified by the West Midlands Police Indepe Independent Office for the Police Conduct, investigators were sent to the scene and began an investigation. Th that included reviewing the video from the officer who fired the, the shot. They recognise incidents of this nature can be of great concern to the community and everyone connected. Thankfully, Mr Cousins recovered from his injuries. Our thorough investigation examined the actions of the police involved, including the officer who fired the shot, and we have found that they were in line with the policy. The police officer who carried out the operation had been briefed that they might face an armed threat and that gang members involved in gun crime in the region often hid weapons down the back of their trousers. So this is what the officer was told by his commanding officer beforehand. Body-worn video supported the uh, account given by the officer who said Mr. Cousins did not immediately comply with commands to raise his hand and appeared to be reaching behind to get something out of his pocket. At that moment, he thought it was a gun. In our view, the officer concerned believed that his life was in immediate and genuine risk posed to him and the colleague, he made a split-second decision to shoot. Mr. Cousins complained about the way he was dealt with after and it showed that the shooting officers moved to help him with first aid at the arrival of the medical services and took Mr. Cousins to hospital. They claim, this is the only, this is one of the things that I find a bit odd, they claim they had no knowledge of Mr. Sharif Cousins at this time and from my knowledge of Berg Bar members ex or, or or current the police have a lot of knowledge of them they keep very good tracks on them they want to make sure they're not up to nothing bad as well as studying the body footage the investigation involved ballistic analysis gathering statements from officers independent witnesses identified during house to house inquiries in addition we looked at the firearms authorizations of the officers involved and reviewed police radio transmissions all police officers were treated as witnesses throughout our investigation, which was completed within a year. Discussions uh, about sensitive stuff was withheld until this time. So from that, they're saying that when that copper had that gun aimed at Sharif, he moved in a way with his hand like he was going into his pocket and that they'd been told previously that gang members in the area carry guns in the back of their jackets. So I'm not sure because we've never seen this footage, so it is, it is dubious. And at the end of the day, unless you really see a gun, I didn't realise they could shoot you just if they thought you had a gun on you. To me, that seems a little bit extreme, do you know what I mean? I thought you had to physically see a gun before you shot anybody. What they're telling us now is that if a police officer's got a gun on you, in any way, shape or form, do not even breathe, do not move in any way, shape or form, because you could get shot dead. That is what they're telling us and they, and they can get away with that. Yeah, like I said, without seeing the actual footage yourself, it's hard to judge, but uh, the inquiry has decided this. I don't know what your guys' opinion is. I'd love to hear it. So please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Please don't forget to check out all our other uploads and documentaries on the channel. Peace. As he can't understand why he was shot. I was in the flash of the gun and I didn't actually believe it happened and like, I was like, you just actually shot me. I'm, I'm looking at the police and I'm saying, you, you really just shot me. 